Hello, Gatovica. <laughs> so, three years ago I started as a head of QA at InnoGames. I had previously been working uh, with sports betting, casinos, um, online poker and so on. So, um, I thought it's not going to be too much of a change for me, changing from online gambling to gaming. Um, after all, uh, games are games, right? And this is the story about how I got into gaming and what I learned about gaming. So basically how gaming, how testing in games works, how games work and so on. A little bit about myself. I started as a developer, got obsessed with QA at some point, realized that there is so much you can, you can do with your developer knowledge uh, in QA, so I decided to, to stay there. I've been working with uh, automated testing and, and managing the testing process since 2005. I've uh, been also working uh, internationally, currently working in Hamburg, but also worked in London, Stockholm, Tallinn, Estonia. And in my spare time, I'm also doing some mentoring for, for game startups and, and other companies who, especially in the automation field. Now, to give you a short idea about what, what our games look like or what are the challenges when, when testing it, I would like to start with this short video. Empires. Develop your own city from the Stone Age to modernity. Available in the App Store and at foe.tv. So, as you could see, we are creating strategy games with the multiplayer features. Also, we have one role-play game. Uh, city building is definitely one of the one of the features that all of our games are offering, and. Our games are available on three different platforms, that is iOS, Android and web browser. So which means compatibility testing is definitely um, an issue for us. Now what do you think if you, if you hear somebody saying game testing? So is it, is it the fancy ads telling you get paid for playing games? Or is it rather some um, really high-tech stuff? After all, games are high-tech. So is it the men in black style guys, testers, using the very modern tools and then methods in order to test the software? Well, when I started at InnoGames, I took over a QA department with already six members in it. So those guys, were completely separated from the development. They were sitting in a separate room, and once the development was done, uh, they started to create test cases, they started to test the product. So obviously that was taking a lot of time. Everything was done in a really, really organized manner. I mean, test cases, test plans for every release. Um, testing was started once the development was done. So basically, what I realized, there was like two things. Uh, first of all, there are no challenging tasks for those guys because they were just writing the test specifications and testing and testing over, all over again. Also, the second thing was, uh, since they were completely separated, they were missing the insight into product. If you want to, do, if you want to design good test cases, um, you need to know how your product works, not only from outside but also from inside. So this kind of setup um, kind of reminded me of this uh, printer destruction scene from Office Space. So why, why are games developed? Yeah, why waste my, many, money on uh, science and uh, medicine if you can develop uh, games? Now, the goal of games, obviously, is, is to provide entertainment, to provide fun to, to loads of people. And that is something that you, that you can't really write into, into a technical specification. 
So I think this is the most important uh, feature of the games, that you can't write a specification for a game to be fun, to be, to be viral, to be attracting for the customers. And I think that is, that is the major challenge. So, knowing that, um, and also knowing that the QA department was already working with, on the maximal efficiency, we didn't start to make um, the, the testing more efficient. Instead of that, we started to look into the game life cycle to see when is the right time to, to apply testing. So, each game, you can also apply to, to really every product. It consists of the following phases. So first you have the development phase, where you develop the product, then you introduce the product, and you are starting to gain customers. At some point, uh, your product sta it starts to grow. Um, at some point, it becomes mature, and then it starts to de decline. Obviously, you want to invest most of the money into the product while it's been developed and while it is introduced and while it's growing. Once it uh, has become mature, you just ramp down the investments. And when it starts to decline, you, um, you almost don't spend any money at all. Then, we started to look into when do we actually need to test? When is most of the testing required? And we came up with the following. So prior to introduction, it is really important to find a way how to build a product that the customers like without knowing what they like, because you don't have any customers. Uh, during the introduction phase, you, you will start uh, getting your first customers, so which means you will get like real customer feedback and you, you know how to, you can act accordingly. Uh, once in the growth phase, it's all about scaling out your game or scaling out your product. So it can be adding new levels, it can be going to new markets. So basically, it is business as usual from QA or testing perspective. It doesn't add too much uh, work to that. And in maturity and, and decline phase, obviously, you're not going to do any, any more investments uh, or too many investments into, into the testing. Now, the, we found out that the development phase is the one which is um, needing or having the largest QA needs. And we started to look more deeper into, into the development. We found out that regardless of a game, a game development uh, life cycle consists always of five phases. And I will tell a little bit more about those phases right now. So first, you have a conception phase. In the, con uh, in the concept phase, uh, you or your game team, usually it consists of a game designer and a product manager. They, they work on a concept, uh, and the concept should uh, then outline a, a game or a game concept that might be interesting for, for people. So this um, includes creating the story for a game, uh, saying, okay, what genre it is, uh, who's the target audience, what setting does the game have. Obviously, this uh, involves a lot of uh, market research, and um, while doing the concept, you also have to you have to think years in, in advance because once you start uh, build the product, you, you have like one uh, stand on the market, but after half a year when the game is launched or maybe ha after a couple of years, it will be a completely different story. So a game concept might be, just to give you an example, it might say that, okay, we want to create a city building game with fantasy setting and we would be targeting people from 18 to 60 years. In this phase, we don't hardly do any testing or QA, but QA is getting notified about new projects starting, so we can start doing plans, and plans in terms of uh, how to build the tools, um, 
recruit new people and so on. Once the conception is done, we are going into pre-production phase. In pre-production, we uh, we have a, already a little bit bigger team. This is uh, involving already a, a developer or a couple of developers. And the goal of the pre-production is to prove that that it is possible to implement uh, the kind of concept that uh, that was created in the concept phase. Uh, for QA, again, there is not so much to do. Um, but what we kick off at that point is uh, staffing. So we're trying to find uh, the perfect, perfect tester uh, for the team. Now the third and the largest phase is production. And the production is, don't confuse production with uh, production environment. So in games development, it's, it's rather like uh, the terminology is like in movies. So you also have like movie production. Um, in production is uh, when the actual game development is, is happening, it is the longest phase. It usually takes no less than six months to complete, but sometimes it also can, uh, can be a year, two years even. And uh, especially if you look at the uh, AAA games that um, some bigger companies are producing, like Electronic Arts and so on, they, they might produce a game for three, even for four years. So the development team during this phase comes more, uh, more and more into a repeatable way of delivery, so which means that we can also start uh, developing a QA process. A QA process in this, this case means that uh, we will have tasks in JIRA, we will get, uh, create acceptance criteria, we'll make sure that the developers test their own deliveries, um, and so on. Uh, during this phase, we, we are also planning for beta. So beta is the next phase. I will come shortly to that as well. And uh, the plan for beta usually contains, okay, what we are, are we going to test during beta and who is going to do the beta test for us. Um, a little bit about the game organization. So all the game teams that we have, they work as a independent organization, so you can even say that they are companies inside the company. And a game team usually has a product manager, has a game designer, has a front-end developer, more front-end developers, back-end developers, artists. And when I started, uh, QA, as I mentioned, was a separate silo. And since we were lacking insight into how the, how the products were developed. So we decided to make that. So in order to enable the insight, we also placed the QAs inside the game teams. And then we had like proper cross-functional teams. Now each team is using iterations or sprints for the deliveries. And here you can also see what kind of uh, what kind of uh, tasks um, the, dev the testers are doing during the sprint. So during the sprint planning, the tester is, is giving input what needs to be tested, who needs to test it. Uh, we are always looking at uh, all levels, at unit, at integration testing, at end-to-end -end testing, so that we don't uh, cover the same scenarios in, in unit testing and end-to-end -end testing, or integration testing and end-to-end -end testing. And, uh, with that, we also make sure that the, the developers are testing the, the deliveries. So during the sprint, um, testers are mostly working with exploratory testing of the new features. Uh, they are also creating a test plan for beta. And once in the beta phase, um, a QA, a game QA is then responsible for uh, coordinating the whole beta testing process. Of course, in order to, to have continuous improvement in place, uh, the tester is also responsible for uh, for follow-up, for gathering the feedback from customers, from external external uh, stakeholders like uh, community management, system administration, and so on. So, now we come to beta phase. And 
the main goal for beta phase is to to give your product to the real customers. So so far we have been uh, testing testing the product only with uh, in-house resources. Uh, one thing that is maybe also inter interesting to mention during the development phase, we, we are doing um, uh, something that is called Office Alpha. So basically we are uh, setting up an alpha testing session during the weekend and everybody is invited to join and obviously the people um, having, having the best results in the, uh, in the games, they will be rewarded in, in some way. So during the beta phase, uh, feedback from real users, um, QA is then coordinating the whole process and developers are then fine-tuning and fixing the defects. So uh, what happens if, uh, if we find out during the beta phase that the customer doesn't like the product? Well, first we of course try to fix it but sometimes it, it also has happened to us, even though with, uh, with that lot of experience, um, sometimes the customers just don't like your product. And what happens then is uh, uh, we try to fix it as much as possible, and if we realize that uh, fixing it completely would cost us more than, than creating a new game, then we are just shutting down the project. And unfortunately, this is happening from, from time to time. So, for beta uh, phase, we, we are using different, fa uh, different ways of uh, sourcing the testing team. And uh, I just wanted to, to share a uh, few things that, we, that we've done um, involving our customers as well as uh, uh, involving external uh, companies. So for one of our products, uh, we were contracting an offshore team and the team size used to be like two to six members and uh, the company only agreed to adjust the size every two weeks which, uh, which meant that we had to pay for two to six person even when we didn't uh, use them. And with this uh, kind of setup, it took them around 10 days to complete the test assignment. Um, so we started to look into, into, into the testing needs and into the testing which was provided by, by the team. So as you can see from uh, this graph, uh, during the first seven days, there is not so much to be tested in, um, in a game release. So most of the testing, or most of the testing need, is coming from the end of the sprint. And if you have a permanent team, in the beginning of the sprint, you don't have enough tasks for them. In the end of the sprint, you have too many tasks for them, so which means that you can't work it out uh, until the sprint end. I've been working quite a lot with testing, so I have quite a many contacts from, from different countries. So I started to negotiate with different partners and my aim was to, to get a scalable team, a team that we could, uh, let's say, call them on Wednesday and say, we need 10 guys for Friday. It took me some time, but after a couple of weeks I had a couple of testing providers who, were, who agreed to give us a team from uh, 8 to 15 uh, people and this with, only, with a notice period of only two to three days. <coughs> so, as you can see from the chart, for a um, two-member team it takes uh, ten days to complete the testing task, but for a ten-member team it only takes two days. And since we were hiring them only for, for two days, we didn't have to pay for the time that, they, that we didn't really have any task for them. So we brought the lead time for testing down by eight days and by having the same cost for the external testing team. Second interesting feature that I would like to share is um, involving your users to testing. 
Um, one thing that gaming definitely has is a huge number of players. We at InnoGames, we have around 150 million players. And all those players together, they are forming something that we are calling a um, community. So community, they are our players. Obviously, they are the best people to know the product. And it's often the case that a lot of companies, they, even if they have uh, people who are keen to provide feedback, they are not using that feedback. We didn't want to let this feedback go. So hence, we introduced something that we are calling community testing. And so basically, community test process looks like that. First, somebody from InnoGames QA, we have built a spe special tool for that. It's called community testing tool. We create a session in there. Uh, then the people uh, from the community are able to sign up for the testing session. The testing session usually uh, runs over the weekend. And then the QA opens the session, which means that um, the community people, they are able to, to provide feedback. And it's not like uh, when I joined the games, we, we had like, also we were using this community features, anyhow we didn't have the community testing tool, and uh, the testing was more of like, okay, go and play something. But uh, instead of that, we, we are creating now proper descriptions, we were doing it in uh, session-based management style, so basically each uh, tester gets a kind of a mission, what he or she needs to complete. And then they can just provide uh, the feedback in the community testing tool. Once the session is closed, QA is uh, reviewing the reports, removing the uh, duplicate issues, invalid issues, if needed asking for more feedback. Transferring the info into your bug tracker, this is done automatically. And in order to keep the community people happy and coming back, uh, we reward them. In the beginning we used to uh, provide as a reward in-game currency, but at some point we realized it's, um, it's not really the best way to reward, and we uh, settled for monetary rewards instead. Now the outcomes of uh, community testing. We currently have three active products, which means that those products are using community testing on a monthly basis. Uh, there are at least five test sessions happening every month. There are 22, sorry, 10 to 20 testers participating. And 2015, we got 829 reported bugs which were also accepted, so I would say that was, that has been quite a success. Now also a small insight into the community testing tool, so you can see a list of test sessions here with product name, when it starts and so on. So this is the page where a community person can sign up, sign up for the testing. Uh, then here you have the <laughs> test session description, so those are the guidelines, basically, for, for testers during the uh, session. We're also trying to do um, as much as possible automated regression testing, but for, for, for like existing products where you don't want to invest anymore into building up test automation, uh, we're also doing manual regression testing, and sometimes uh, the session is not only exploratory, but we we are also using our test management tool where we got the regression test test <coughs> cases. So now we are coming to the last phase. This is live. When going live, we are first launching the pilot markets. So pilot markets usually are the the markets where we were doing beta testing. Um, and once that is done, we launch the remaining markets. We usually have like 30 markets. It depends on the game, but it's, it's usually like 28, 30, 32. Uh, since the game's minimal viable product is, uh, is not always... Uh, if you build a game, the minimal viable product is not containing all the levels, all the characters, for Forge, all the ages, for example. So once live, you start with 
content releases, so you, you provide like uh, new characters, new levels, and so on. And this is more like, a, this is more of a, when, when developing the game was uh, really uh, kind of, you know, a changing process, then uh, the content releases are more of a business as usual. So for, for testers, um, for testers, it means that they they are more and more getting into the into the sprint testing loop, uh, feedback on sprint planning, uh, exploratory testing during the sprint, um, and so on. One thing we noticed in the in the maintenance phase is. Um, is that um, in order to, to do a release on production, we need to have a st different stakeholders. So it's not only the, the development team that you need to have, but you also have uh, community managers, you have system administration, marketing, and uh, there are like uh, different stakeholders who are part of the uh, release. And what we saw that um, a really big uh, issue, which was also ca causing problems to the service quality uh, was uh, synchronization of the of the resources so that everybody was on the same same page so sometimes it happened that we were supposed to uh, put the feature live but the community management didn't know about that and didn't inform the customers or the system administrator who was supposed to do the release in production wasn't there and hence we introduced the uh, release meetings during the release meeting following questions are getting asked so what happens and when who needs to do what? What are the results? Does everybody know what we are rolling out? Are there any untested content? Any app store submissions? Any known issues? Who needs to be informed? And the most important question, what could go wrong? Um, also, a small insight into what else we are testing. Obviously, uh, that a game has to be fun to play, that has to be built into the product. So, when we are selecting our developers, when we are selecting our staff, it is really important for us that, uh, that the people who are working for us, they, they are also passionate uh, gamers and that they love the product. But we are testing, for example, functionality. We are testing device compatibility or browser compatibility. Uh, we're testing on backend. We're testing backend performance. Uh, the backend performance requirements are really high. Uh, so the average response time that we have shouldn't be more than 100 milliseconds. For one of the latest products, we even um, managed to get response times as as low as five to six milliseconds on, on average. Uh, this is anyhow uh, not including the load balancer, but this is measured on the app server itself. So, and here you can see when, when the testing happens. So in the production phase, we, we are starting with uh, functional testing followed by compatibility testing. Uh, then we got the QA process built at some point, start with a backend performance test, uh, also build automated uh, tests for the product. Automation is another topic that I'm, I'm usually speaking about in the conferences, but uh, uh, I, was, I was told by the conference organizers not to uh, go too deep into that. Um, and I think I missed so. And uh, during the beta phase, we are we are starting them with the community testing, with inviting those people, mm -hmm. inviting those people to to our tests, mm -hmm. uh, as well as localization tests. So, and what I can say as a conclusion is, um, I think even though games testing is is seen as earning money while while playing games, is it is much more serious business than that. Um, we have a huge customer base and this enables uh, to involve uh, your customers really good in, in your testing process and gather valuable feedback from them. And 
in order to, to create a quality product, um, you have to find the best mix. You have to, uh, you have to balance between functional testing, non-functional testing, uh, compatibility testing, testing audio, testing visuals. And you have to do that in the, in the right life cycle phase. So that was it. Any questions?